Our next speaker is uh, Professor uh, Yoram Yomtov, uh, who is a professor emeritus to the Department of Zoology in Tel Aviv University. He served as an advisor to thousands of graduate students working on their master's and PhD thesis. He published several books and more than 200 scientific articles on bird migration, behavioral ecology, and comparative zoologies of birds and animals. Okay, uh, thank you for inviting me to talk. I'm going to speak about the impact, it should be the possible impact, of global warming on body size of animals. Uh, I'm saying possible impact because all the facts that I will show, or the interpretations that I will talk about, are correlations. They are not a, a product of an experiment, control experiment. It's an interpretation of the data that we see. Now, <clears throat> we all know that the world is warming, and here are the data. You see the temperature rose, and if you need another fact that support it, here you have a fact that support it. <laughs> is this the product of global warming? I doubt it. But correlation, for sure, if you will measure the size of the swimming suit here, and correlate it with time or temperature, there will be a very good correlation. So please keep, in, keep this in mind during my talk. So uh, animals change their body size all the time. Individual animals may change it. Even adults may change their body size. There are iguanas in Galapagos that during hard times they reduce their body size. Adults do that. And so do shrews in Siberia in the winter time. So animals can be regarded as barometer, reflecting what's going on in the environment. And one of the most important uh, factor in the environment is temperature. And body size is affected by temperature. It can be affected in various ways. Uh, the climate is determined by the Earth's movement and by, of course, solar radiation. Solar radiation affects the climate. Climate affects precipitation, temperature, and so on. And these affect food resources and also affects animals directly. In addition to that, the rise in human populations during the last 100 years uh, produced quite a lot of food or products that animals can use and increase their body size. I'm talking not about farm animals, I'm talking about wild animals. So there are lots of sources for growth. And global climate can change, global climate change can affect animals either directly or indirectly in various ways that I'm going to talk about. And uh, the most uh, known, well-known rule in uh, zoogeography is called Bergman rule. It states that animals that are coming are living <coughs> in uh, warm environments are smaller than the relatives that live in cold environments. And, uh, uh, and here you see an example of it. The wolves in Israel, they increase in uh, body size as you go north. And this uh, uh, figure is based on specimens taken from Tel Aviv University collection, zoological collection, and you can see that this is uh, quite significant, and it occurs in very many species of animals in Israel and otherwise. And uh, it can take quite a short time for animals to change their body size. For example, there is an animal in Australia called the brush tail possum that show in Australia the Bergmanian trend, which means small temperature in the north, in Australia, and large ones in the south, in Victoria, in South New South Wales, in Tasmania. So some animals were taken about 140, 150 years ago from the south of uh, Australia to New Zealand to establish themselves there in order to start a fur industry in New Zealand. These animals increased in numbers to a tremendous effect, and they caused huge damage to the forests in Australia, in New Zealand. Uh, they had no uh, competitors, no predators, so uh, they were transferred, as you can see, this is the animal. And uh, within 40 generations, the line for Australia is similar to the line in uh, New Zealand. 
So the animals adapted themselves to the conditions, the new conditions that they found in New Zealand. So it is not uh, an outrageous thought to think that within the last hundred years, animals will change their body size in relation to the increase in ambient temperature. So I went to several museums uh, around the world and also used data from bird ringers in order to follow this trend. So decrease uh, in body weight is expected due to global warming, according to Bergman rule. And the first person who showed that was an American uh, scientist. Uh, I should say that Bergman rule is explained by surface to volume ratio of the body. A, a large animal has relatively a small surface area, which means that such animal, when it lives, in a cold environment will lose less energy to the environment due to the cold to keep its body warm. The opposite happens in the desert, in hot desert. When animals live in a desert, it has an advantage of being small because the surface area will be relatively large and it will be able to dissipate heat without using water. If it has water, okay, so much so good. But if it doesn't have, it can uh, dissipate heat by for example, radiation. So, uh, one animal that was studied, I mean the first animal that was studied from this aspect is the wood rat, a species of wood rat in the uh, southwestern United States. And uh, the person who worked on it, a woman scientist, she uh, measured uh, their body size and found that within eight years of research, uh, they decreased their body size by 15% and attributed this decline to ambient temperature. She didn't examine other factors. She, it was almost obvious to her that it is due to ambient temperature, which can really be the, the factor that produced it. But again, this is just a correlation. Now, <clears throat> uh, after I saw her paper, I uh, went to our collection uh, in Tel Aviv University and chose several species of birds that, from which we have quite a lot of specimens collected <coughs> during 50 years. And what I got so, ah, so the temperatures in Israel uh, increased. This is for my work done in Pinchas Albert Club. And I uh, use this museum data and you see every dot here or square is uh, specimens from the museum. Uh, the, la the years during the 20th century are on the x-axis. The y-axis uh, show body mass of four species and you see that all of them declined. But this was not a general rule because two other species for which also we had quite a lot of uh, specimens in the museum didn't show any trend. So several years later I spent a sabbatical in England and I went to two to I went to two localities where people for the last uh, 30 to 40 years collected data by ringing birds, small birds, small passerines. And uh, they measured 14 species of uh, passerines. They had thousands of data for these uh, uh, two, two places that are marked here by uh, arrows. And uh, they were kind enough to give me the data for uh, analyzing. So I predicted that body mass will decrease in general. Uh, this is expected, uh, as I said, from uh, Bergman rule. But this happened only in four species of the 14. Uh, and other trends have been observed as well. For example, these are four species that their body size changed. In two, it decreased in this figure. In two, they decreased. In one, it showed a trend of increase and then decrease. And in the fourth, it shows an increase. Well, there is no problem for me to find explanation for that 
because the ones that increased in size is the blackbird, which feed on earthworms in England, and there was an increase in the rainfall, in the amount of rainfall during the research period, and many uh, earthworms climb in the soil column to the surface, and it is easier for uh, blackbirds to catch them. But again, this is only a correlation. So this is another example of a uh, change. And on the whole, not all species change their body size. Of the 14, only six change their body size in any trend. And we don't know, we have no idea why some did change and some didn't change. And it is not related to uh, several factors that uh, I uh, tested, like the size of the distribution area, the habitat, sample size, if they are migrant or not. So we are puzzled. We see a trend or trends in body size, and we don't know how to explain it. Again, a case of missing data. Um, now, There is another uh, possibility how animals will change their body size due to global warming. Uh, if the, in cold areas, if the winter is shortened because the temperature is high, then several things happen. First of all, animals which live in such area can convert energy which otherwise they would have used for increase of body size or for maintenance they can divert this energy to growth. So they can become larger, opposite that what expected from Bergman rule. And another factor is that if the winter is, is uh, shortened and the summer is lengthened, then animals will, uh, plants will produce more uh, biomass, primary productivity will increase, as uh, Professor Byerland has shown, and animals will have plenty of food, so they can convert this uh, plant material into body mass, so they can increase. So the next step in the study was to go to areas or to countries that lie in high latitudes and measure specimens in museums and see what happens there. And one of these uh, places is Japan, where uh, temperature increases in most, most uh, countries in the world. And I took uh, skulls of two uh, species, two uh, rodents, and I measured the skulls, and in one of them, sure enough, body size increased. The other one didn't change at all. Why one did it and one not, I have no idea. Nobody knows. But the fact is that one of them changed their body size, so it can be attributed to global warming. This is the most obvious uh, factor, the change. Uh, the same happened with uh, uh, shoes, hadafim in Hebrew, that uh, live in Alaska. You have to remember that shoes in Alaska weigh about nine, nine grams. It's like the weight of my small finger. And they don't hibernate, they don't sleep in winter. They have to eat all winter. So they eat every day amount of food which is equal to their body weight. And there is a very harsh, this is a very harsh environment, very little food, so they have a problem. Uh, and uh, I expected that uh, since Alaska is one of the places where global warming is uh, very pronounced, on average on Earth now the temperature rose by 0.8 degrees globally, but in Alaska by 4 degrees. So I expected that in Alaska they increased their body size and uh, as you can see, there is a correlation between January temp uh, the temperature of January, mean temperature, and body size controlled for several factors. I will, I'm not going to enter to the details. So it seems that shoes in Alaska indeed increased their body size. Uh, so one can uh, conclude this part of the talk and say, okay, global warming, can increase or decrease body size in various ways, and I showed you an example, uh, several examples for that, but this is not the only factor that changed during the 20th century. As I said, human population size increased tremendously. 
the standard of living in most countries increased, especially in Western countries, increased in parallel or even more, and people got much higher than before. For example, uh, in Israel, uh, you know, every boy has to go to the army when he <coughs> is around 18. Mean a uh, shoe size when I joined the army, which was in 1956, was 42. Now it is 45. So if you look at the people who, who became bigger than any others on earth are the Dutch. Maybe they became, well, it's not a joke, they became taller much more than any other people. Some people, I don't think that it is true, some people say that they are taller because it has an advantage. Most, uh, most of the large part of Holland is, lies below the sea level and in case something will happen, <laughs> this is an, an advantage. But I don't think that this is a true explanation. But the true explanation is that the standard of living rose. The, quality, quantity of food offered to Dutch children is much better than before, and medical care. So, some of this affects only wild animals. For example, uh, in Sweden there are otters, lutra. Uh, this is a predator which feed on fish and small invertebrates in water. So, uh, this is the otter and uh, map Sweden, and if you look at body size uh, of the author in Sweden, it increased during the 20th century, or part of the 20th century. And I wasn't sure how could it be, and what is the factor that might affect it. So I took data on how many days a lake or the lakes near the residence of each one of the specimens that I measured during its year of birth was covered by, by uh, ice, which means that the animals, the otters, had no food for all this period that had, or very little food, when the lake was covered with ice. And sure enough, there is a correlation between the ice cover, the lengths or in days in, of ice cover, and uh, body size. The longer uh, time that the lake is covered with ice, the smaller is the animal, the otter, that was born at this year. And this is one possible effect that affected the otters to become uh, bigger in Sweden. There are otters also in Norway, but most of them live in fjords. The fjords never, fr never fries, falls, never freeze. So, I measured uh, uh, otters in uh, uh, Norway, and as you can see, if I correlate birth year or death year, it's not important in this matter, uh, you see that there is increase in skull size, in body size, in other words. What might be the reason there? No problem to find a factor. Many fjords in, in Norway have cages in which Norway, Norwegians grow salmon. Norway is the largest producer <coughs> of salmon in the world. And here is a figure that shows you the increase in the production or the export of salmon in, uh, in Norway. Now, these cages are not impregnable. About a third, it is estimated that about a third of all salmons escape from the cages to the fjords and are available for otters and other animals to eat. In addition to that, the food offered to uh, the salmon are pellets thrown into the cages. Some of it, or much of it, is falling outside the cages and provide food to fish of other species. So this might be the factor that affected body size of otters. And here is a figure showing it fish sold or exported against body size of the otter. The same thing happens in Israel with, for example, foxes. You know that in the Galilee people produce uh, chicken and turkeys, and in some settlements they don't, uh, many uh, chickens are dying during the process of growth and are thrown away. In several settlements they are not thrown away 
properly, not according to law. In Israel, very, little, very few laws are being kept by the population, as you know. <laughs> and uh, they are available to animal sweep. And the same goes in countries like Spain. And this is a figure from a study that I did in Spain. You see, uh, these two figures show the relative size of foxes in agricultural area in the, on the right and in non-agricultural areas in the left. And you can see that there is a very highly significant difference in body size. Foxes from agricultural areas are much uh, bigger. So uh, we see that several factors may be related to the increase or decrease in body size. And it's interesting to know what is the proportion of animals that really change. So I did a meta-analysis with Eli Geffen, my colleagues and friend, and we accumulated data from about uh, more than 400 uh, cases in which animals uh, were measured, either body size or body length or wing length or whatever you want. And if you take separately birds and mammals, this is for birds, uh, you see of the body size uh, uh, part here, 38% of the cases uh, did, did not change at all, and 62 did change. In what direction? Oh. Uh, 36 percent increased and 64 decreased. However, this was not the same trend uh, if you look at uh, linear measurements, body uh, uh, lengths or wing lengths, about there is no difference between the proportion changed or not changed, and of those that changed, most uh, there was no difference between which direction they did change. It is uh, different with mammals. I had no, no, not enough data for, to analyze body mass. Uh, only the sm uh, sample size was too small. But if you measure skull size or body size, the opposite that happened with birds uh, happened there. 67%, the majority, didn't change. About a third did change. And of those that did change, 72 increased while the rest didn't uh, increase. So, uh, decrease in other words. So, there is a difference between mammals and birds. I think that this, the difference is really artificial. It depends on what people measured. And uh, in summary, what I can say is that animals' body size may be affected, but may. It's not a sh for sure, by ambient temperature and diet. The change can take place within a short time, several decades. Uh, the change is not uniform in the direction. And uh, the evidence uh, which factor affected body size is at best circumstantial. Thank you for your attention.